So I'm glad we're finally getting the opportunity to do this because I wanted to ask both of you a very specific question because y'all are both very big gamers and I'm more of a fake gamer. I play <laughs> one or two games and that's kind of it, but y'all play more of everything of a different variety. So is there a game that y'all have played either recently or from your childhood that was either a one-off weird game or a spin-off of a movie or a TV show that you played and you were really surprised by? So for me, for instance, Destroy All Humans back in the day. Didn't think anything of it. Played it. It was amazing. Uh, Matrix. Uh, Path of Neo. It was a spinoff of, I think, Matrix Revolutions, an amazing game. The Punisher for PlayStation 2 was an amazing game. That was a good uh, game. Yeah. you see where I'm going with mm -hmm. this? So, like, those are mine. Do yeah. You, do y'all have anything similar? I can't really think of anything right now, to be honest. Um, Because I I definitely have one, and I don't know if this is gonna jog y'all's memory. Do you guys? I think it was called Brothers in Arms, and and it could be it, they had both brothers had masks, right? And you could like get different paints, but it was like a, a mission, right? And you would it was shooting, right? And they were basically like mobsters, or they were hired by like they were hitmen. Is this hitmen. Army of Two? Is that what that's you're it? About? Army, yeah. Army of I was Two. Say, that, that is so familiar. fun. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, I played that. Um, only, I guess the sad part about that is I didn't really have a friend to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know exactly. I was I was definitely playing with the computer or swap hot yeah. swapping between the two. Yeah, for sure. Until I like convinced a buddy, like I promise it's a good game. You just need to try it. That's insane. I mean, who else knew about that game? To be, I, right. I I really don't know any. When I played that game, I didn't remember the name first right. of all, and then I also didn't know anybody else who played it back yeah. when I played it. But I also just liked you know, shooters back then. So any shooter that came out, I would pick up and yeah. just play. Didn't yeah. really matter. Uh, after, not Call of Duty, but what were the other ones? Um, You're talking about like Battlefield or? Uh, not Battlefield. You're not talking about like Black Ops or anything. It's no, like no, completely no. separate from Call of Duty. Yeah. yeah. Was like a, a Medal of Honor? Medal of Honor. Medal yeah, of Honor. I, Medal of Honor yes. great. I mean, all of those, I played those. I would replay those games because they were so crazy. You know, you could get in tanks. That was one of the craziest things. Then it led to Battlefield, you know, things that were yeah, a little bit more Yeah, Medal serious. of Honor. Was it like yeah. Red Dawn or yeah. something like that? It was so good. I think it had like one of those mission types. I, I do remember that. But I like when he said about the tanks, one hundred percent. I was that was like that turning point. And then Battlefield was like, "Hey, you can be any class." And then you can fly. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can get in this jet. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't right. matter. Yeah, that's what separated Battlefield. Which Battlefield was also a weird one because I played Battlefield Bad Company, which was like the original masterpieces. Right, yeah. all of them. Which was a, had a super heavy like comedy feel to it. Oh right? yeah. Oh, and then yeah. it went to just straight, like, almost Call of Duty. And that, like, blues music that they were playing? Yeah. Yes. What? Yeah. It was crazy. Because one crazy. of their old, on the original cover for Xbox Battlefield Bad Company on the back, their main logo was a frag grenade with, like, a smiley face pull tab on it, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Am I yeah. making that yep. up? No, you're not. Okay, yeah. So it, it had a lot of comedy to it, like, because there was different characters in the main storyline that ha had all their different brand. Like, one was, like, super, you know, rash. And you'd make all the, like, dirty jokes. And yep. then you had, like, the either the woman or, like, the scrawny dude who was, like, the demolition expert. You'd make all his other types of jokes. And then they moved to Battlefield, like, serious, and they stopped all that. Right? Yeah. Well, and then, it, like, I think that saw because a lot of people said that Bad Company – was the starting point to convince people that shooters with classes, like sniper class, LMG, stuff like that, could be successful. Does it and then now we have the modern I I call it like the drag or like the drop in. Like if I'm playing with an assault rifle on Call of Duty and I'm like, this isn't going good, or I just wanna like just spray and pray, then I can drop in with LMG literally the next loadout. And I think Battlefield forced you to like 
Um, cause, and I think it's the newer ones, but like if you, you didn't get better weapons unless you played that class and you stayed to that class. And I think that's what battlefield, like bad company led to. So, yeah. but no, I was just curious on that topic because like I said, the Punisher, I didn't expect much cause the movie was good, right? With Frank Castle in it, but mm-hmm. the game came out and it was even better than the movie. <laughs> and I was like, damn. <laughs> I they, never really went for those games, man. Uh, I think I, I think I did play one of the Matrix video games, but I really just, it was Halo. It was a lot of shooters. I didn't really play that much. Um, it, it was, there was few like God of War. I stuck with, you yeah, know what I mean, yeah. from the very beginning. There was not that many games where. I guess you're right, though. You said one-off games, right? Yeah, weird fringe one-off games. Yeah, it was. It was it, mainly it was like whatever my friends were playing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Is what I really tried to get into. There were every once in a while, like the Army of Two, yeah. where you just you get sidetracked a little. Yeah, bit. it's just it's games. Little. Just you never heard about, but you just tried. Like Star Wars had a bunch of spin-off games that were great. Like Republic Commando was yeah. one of them off the top of my head. And then uh, Matrix had a couple where it was, you played as Naomi and Ghost in one. I can't remember what the actual game was called, but that one was great. You know, and we've talked about it. You know what forced me to play those games is Call of Duty's Mark, I mean, not Call of Duty's, uh, Markdowns at GameStop, like Call of Duty, right? So the game had been out, or the new Call of Duty comes out, so it forces all of these shooters that aren't getting a lot of love to be marked down. And then I would go, I can remember, like, my grandparents would pick me up. We'd go in on Friday, and I'm looking for the yellow tag, which is off of the MSRP. Like, I'm paying, because Army of Two was one of those ones that I paid, like, 16 bucks for yeah. and played. And I was like, this isn't bad, you know? And then years later, they make a platinum edition of the game, and you're like, I guess it wasn't that bad of a game. There was a lot of people playing. So I'm going to get off on a tangent, because I feel like we've lost that part of, like, the physical game part of it like there isn't a markdown well there's a digital markdown now like on like steam sale i think steam summer sale will keep us alive and force you to play new games or well i say moody and i'm new games but we try to convince you of the new games yeah and i'll just see like yeah i'll play it and then never touch it uh i'm I'm bad about that my my downfall is seeing a game 5.99 and under (laughs) i'm buying buying (laughs) Yeah. Five bucks? Why not? Yeah. W- which why not? Yeah, which these weird fringe one off games, that's basically what got me to play them before Steam was a thing, yeah. just back in the day, is I would go to Funko Land or GameStop or Best Buy. Funko and, Land. Yeah, you, do you ever go to Funko no, Land I, out no here? Idea I don't know is. if you lived in Mesquite when they had the Funko Land, but yeah, I yeah. think it died off in like It 90- was always the GameStop off of Galloway. Right? Yeah, I think Funko died off in like 99. It tried, but it just couldn't hang on. Um, it was like Game Exchange before Game Exchange. Yeah. yeah. And basically... Don't, I don't even, I've never even been to a Game Exchange. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Never seen one of those in my life. <laughs> yeah, and it was just basically any game that was in the bargain bin for like two to five bucks, I would play it because that's all I could afford. Or yeah. to say my mom could afford. I was, so, yeah, yeah. I was like, I didn't have no money. <laughs> I was like, please, yeah. please, it's $2. Yeah. And uh, which, that's where I bought Shadow the Hedgehog originally. Yeah. For like two bucks out of the bargain bin. I want to say at Target or something. And now you can resell it for $80. Yep. Nuts. Yeah. Which is Nuts. crazy. It never would have thought. Which is the same thing we were talking about earlier, like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. You should have saved a Especially Mega Man. I should have never let that kid beat me on the bus for all those cards. Hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to Aging with 8-Bit. It's the podcast where we talk growing up with games and how they've evolved over the years. And if you couldn't tell, this is a special episode because we have our very first guest ever on this podcast on episode 19. Yes, sir. Welcome, Moody. He is one of my friends since high school. He's a big gamer. <clears throat> Best friend. Be- yeah, <laughs> best friend, because he's the first one we had on the podcast, for yeah. sure. Do uh, you want to just tell us a little bit about what your gaming background is, what you mainly go for nowadays in our old age of 30? Um, It's mainly just kicking it with the homies. I just, I want to be in Discord with the friends. Whatever they're playing, you know, wow. Yeah. Uh, 
I guess that's the one everybody goes back to all the time. Yeah, yeah so it's it's hard back. to let it go. It's yeah. like a drug. Yeah. It's been pretty easy for me, to be honest. I get to like one or two levels below max level, and I'm out. I'm just yeah. I'm done for some reason. I don't know why, but it's I always th- how it goes. I think the burnout for our age is just a lot quicker than yeah. what it used to be. Yeah, I mean, even like I just, whenever the PlayStation 5 came out, I had to have one. Had to have one. I spent like eleven hundred dollars on a PlayStation just to have one immediately. Didn't even play it. I, there were no <laughs> games for it. I like. Well, well, I just wanted to have it yeah. because there was that gamer. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, that gamer feel. Like, oh, you need this. You need I this. Need. And then it was like two months of no games. There were no games <laughs> out for the PlayStation. So I was like, damn, why did I do this? It's the it's the polar opposite release of any. Do you remember the PlayStation Three release? Like when it was like when it dropped. Because I think there was, like, a God of War exclusive, if I'm wrong. Um, well, PS4, though, too, wasn't it? Um, and I'm way off. God of War Valhalla. Is it Valhalla? Was it the the Nordic one or whatever? That was, like, their edition, right? Was the PS4? Was it the PS5? I think that's the 5. That was the 5. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. was the 3 that had... It was God of War... That's what it was. It was God of War 3 because God of War 2 had come out. Yep. And then it's they were definitely like, three for the PlayStation. Yeah, 3. and then they I were like, "Hey, PlayStation Three is coming out, and yeah. God of War exclusive." And you're like, "Oh my god!" And then if you really wanted it, they had the blood red one with the God of War logo. I do remember that exactly? I do remember that because Xbox was doing uh, Gears of War. Theirs yeah. was red also, that, but it was Gears of War. I think it was the it was the great console war yeah. because they yeah. were ha- we had this this RPG hack and slash, which is yeah. God of War, and then you had the best parts of gears, right? Which mm-hmm. I had to say that gears of war did convince me to ask my dad to get, um, an Xbox. Like I it was like, yeah. I have to try this game and I had both systems and I felt like I was, you know, operating a fortune 500 company with two <laughs> systems. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so you, um, but you've mainly been a PC gamer for yeah. a, uh, quite a long time now. Right. Um, yeah, I would say like seven, eight years of just my main gaming, where I get my main gaming is PC. Um, it, consoles will always have a, you know, a spot. Nowadays, it's a little bit different because, I mean, I don't know, you, with Xbox, Xbox is really, it's it's on my PC now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's no need for that. Uh, you have a PlayStation and a Switch. What else do you need? You know what I mean? Now, nowadays, I look at uh, those little retro, I don't know if you guys see those little advertisements on, like, Instagram, those little retro, uh, it's got, like, 600,000 uh, million emulators. Games. Yeah, the little emulators. Yeah. I look at those, and I'm like, I gotta have one. Yeah. I gotta have one. They look so cool. All these, they're showing all these, like, PlayStation 1 games, PlayStation 2 games, original Xbox games, and... It's so crazy because there have been a few times where I get on Steam and I buy like an older game that's that was that I played a long time ago just to feel a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah. And it never hits the same. <laughs> so I know I'm going to buy one of those yep. and yeah. then play it for maybe a week or two and probably will never see it'll just be inside of a drawer never see the light of day ever again. Yeah. Cuz that's what happened with my Switch. Switch I just put it down, haven't charged it in like a year now. <laughs> and the only time I've Actually, I'm, I lied. I did turn it on recently because uh, Ashley, my girlfriend's uh, nephews and nieces came. Yeah. And I was like, here y'all go. <laughs> y'all want to get roasted on some Mario Kart? Because you, Mario you Kart? don't know. That was Smash my generation, Bros. not yours. Smash yeah. Bros. I would. Like, it, these these are little kids. They don't really know. They both have Switches, but they don't understand what Smash Bros. Like, they know what Smash Bros. is. Yeah. But they are, they're not going to keep up with me. Yeah, yeah no. you come out with a pro controller and be like, "All right, yeah. guys, y'all can have the Joy Cons. Let's get this thing going." Oh, yeah. oh, I did, I did not hold back. I'm not gonna hold back. I don't care how young you are. Yeah. I'm not holding. Plus, back. you know, it's Smash Brothers is our generation, not yours. Yeah. You can go hop on Fortnite. Oh, bro, for all I, was, I, care. I was holding, I was holding uh, the the Falcon punches. Yeah. as they're falling down, just waiting for them over and over again. Yeah. Just, I'm just spamming Falcon punches the whole time, if knocking just, them off. They're like, oh, I want to play Pikachu or Mario. And you're like, all right, I'm going to go with Sephiroth. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go Pikachu for it. Pikachu or Mario. Yeah, you go do that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, speaking of Switch, uh, I dusted off 
our Switch because Metroid Prime 4 is coming out. And I don't know how big of Metroid fans y'all are or, or the original Metroid Prime that came out on the GameCube. That might be one of my favorite games of all time. I know I said Red Faction Guerrilla, uh-huh. but just for Nintendo-wise on the GameCube, Metroid Prime was gotcha. by far my favorite game. I <laughs> And Metroid Prime 4, they just released a trailer. It looks so damn good. They I were, am so happy. They were, uh, so I, I was, was telling Tyler, I was like, dude, Nintendo's going to do their direct, um, their Nintendo Direct. Like, you need to watch this one. You need to watch this. It's supposed to be the big release. And I was watching it on Twitch, and they were doing this, like, they were streaming this crowd watching their Nintendo Direct. So I knew something big was going to happen, and I was watching it. Um, and this guy in the front, like, the, uh, what's the ship called? I, I'm going blank. Her, her ship. Don't ask me. I okay, don't, but anyways, I, I'm not. I'm not Metroid her, lore guy. I literally, I, like I seriously games. thought of you. So her ship is flying in, and this guy had to be our age. Sees the ship and was like screaming and like clapping. Passes out, <laughs> like pat, like <laughs> like hits. And I'm like, oh my god, that's t-. like if there was <laughs> any a time that would have been Tyler. That's oh. pure joy. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. like he's gonna wake up and be like. Is that really happening? Like, I just want to make sure that game is really happening. (laughs) I watched it out here on our couch. I was just laying down, and I saw it pop up on Reddit because I was sitting there refreshing, and someone posted the trailer. I watched it, dropped it on my face immediately. My phone, (laughs) I was so hyped. like uh, Because it looks, the trailer looks so good, and it looks too, like, the flavor of Metroid Prime would, made me love the game in the first place. It, like, it just, it looks so good. It's hitting everything aesthetically. Yeah. Flavor wise, it's just updated graphics. Yeah. I don't know what it, I don't know anything about what the story is going to be, but that is a for sure purchase for me. Like, they got my money. Good job. Moody, do you watch any of the directs, like the Xbox Showcase or the PlayStation Now or whatever? I haven't in so long. Yeah. I just, um, it's so boring to me. Yeah, it's so boring. Really, um, I'll I'll go watch like YouTube clips. Okay, you know what I mean. Yeah, like the I'll highlight. Catch like, up. I, yeah. I don't want to hear the slow. Like this is what you're gonna do this year. Yeah, I used to be so into that. Yeah, because I was so hyped for like Xbox, Xbox everything, PlayStation everything. Yeah, yeah. I was so hyped for all that. But nowadays, I'm waiting on specific games. Yeah, usually on PC. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't. I don't know, like, these days, man, it takes so long for a game to come out. It takes years no, for you're... new games to come out. They no. used to come out, like, monthly. <laughs> yeah. Monthly. Don't even get me started on Elder Scrolls. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's exactly God. what I was going to ask him. It's like, they've been making the Elder Scrolls announcement. Did you see that recent Twitter post, or that tweet? Yeah, no, the I, game, I saw it. The game director I, I of blocked it immediately. <laughs> I was. I don't want to hear any of this crap. Moody to that. So the game director of Elden Ring realized that it had been eleven years. No, six it's years. Elden Ring or Elder Scrolls? Yeah, Elder yeah, Scrolls. Elder, Elder Scrolls. Sorry. Yeah, right. The the game director of Elder Scrolls realized that it has been six years since they dropped the trailer with no gameplay or no announcements. What do you mean realize? Like, well, That's like exactly. One day he was just like, like oh, yeah. on Twitter he Come goes, on, it just came to my, like it just came to like my realization that we dropped this trailer six years ago. And I'm like, why are you putting that out into the <laughs> universe? <laughs> why? Literally, I'm pretty sure it's literally just to piss off the fans. Yes. Because they know. Cause That's got to be a troll. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because they're so heavily invested in Starfield right now. Oh. I don't like. I said they got one dude named Jim working on Elder Scrolls Six, and he's <laughs> by himself. He's like, dude, I really need help. You know, with with programming. You know, the water. Yeah. Did you guys we don't play care Starfield about. at all? Uh, we tried. I tried for yeah. two and a half hours, and I would get halfway through the first mission, and it would, uh, it would basically like brick my computer, and oh, I wow. would have to restart. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But I think it was like right. the shaders. It's that that part of like updating the graphics card, and then when a game like that, because I was I was playing the week. You know, they gave us a week before or whatever to right. the early access. I was playing during that time, so I guarantee you they're not worried about me like playing on a twenty seventy. Yeah, they're they're worried about the guys that are cranking it with the new four series cards or forty series cards, and like 
making sure that they can do the missions how they want. But I did get to play a little bit of it, but I didn't get to play it to the point to where you knew it was fun or not. Right. Yeah. Because I had a lot of friends that played, um, what was the game that we, I told you about. So Moody to tell you, I've had a friend that on this space game dropped, what's the space game where you can buy ships and stuff. Oh, you're talking. Oh crap. Um, yeah. Is it like Eve Online or something? It's kind of no. like that, but we it's ta- we they, trash it all the time. So <laughs> they u- they use it to to basically update Planet Side Two. Are you familiar with Planet Side Two? Uh-huh. So Planet Side Two is it's kind of like a sci fi shooter, obviously. Like, um, and you can like drop into different parts of this like battlefield. Anyways, I'm just gonna put the game up yeah. right here right now. There you go. Video. And <laughs> I've had a friend that dropped eleven grand on this game. Because when a new spaceship comes out, you own that ship. If it gets stolen, that's on you. It's gone. The the updates and the stuff that you make to it is gone. When you oh, get wow. back to your, like, I think it's like the docking thing in space, yeah. you'll have the base ship back. Yeah. But, like, the new one that just came out was a $500 ship. So, hardcore space pirates. Legitimately. <laughs> so, like, they had this, um, they had this, they have these motorcycles, to my point that you could store inside of your ship, and then when you get close to the planet, you can drop in it. There was this exclusive one that came out, and this was just like a clip. It was a Hello Kitty Gundam like skin for this motorcycle, right? That skin, this guy has a YouTube video that I'll have to like show you later. He literally goes on a four-hour hunt finding this guy that Mm -hmm. has this ship, sneaks onto his ship, steals the motorcycle, and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, wait. Sorry to cut you off, though. It's, so when those ships come out, it's just one? No, no, no. Like, you oh, can okay. buy one for okay. your thing, but, right, it's, right. but it's legitimate, like, cash value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if – and you can have different jobs. Like, you can be a – you can buy a freighter that's $2,500, mm-hmm. and you – people can pay you in the game to, like, transport them across the galaxy, stuff like Like, it's legitimate. This is like, wild. It has, like, a market. Yeah, this is crazy. I had a friend that, long story short – um, doesn't live with our other friend anymore because he wasn't paying his part of the rent. And then it came out on our podcast that he had dropped like 12 grand on this game. Not in like, I think you should be talking to your roommates about that. Right. But mm-hmm. um, it was just, it's crazy because it kind of ties into all of that, of playing that, that aspect of like how we just wait and like drop money yep. like out of nowhere. So it's yep. just, my point to it all of like games taking forever. The reason why I said that that game is still an alpha and it's been an alpha for seven or eight years and people have dropped. Um, yeah. I have one that. example of like I 12 think it's grand. about to cross a billion. That's yeah. such a hot new thing nowadays. Yes. Is just keep the funds rolling. Yeah. You know, keep the funds rolling any way you can. And I feel like when they stick a game in beta or alpha for so long, it almost uh, gives the players like a the mentality of we're gonna get something new. We're gonna keep because they're building on to the game, so we're gonna get something new. It's still in beta. The game's not complete. That means we're they're gonna add stuff and add stuff and add stuff. But sometimes developers fail with that, mm-hmm. and they just abandon the game halfway through. And I feel like that happens more often than not. Yeah. I don't, Sometimes they are smaller games, and it really doesn't hurt that much because you're only paying 15, 20 bucks. That's not bad. That's I'm never really mad at you know alpha or games or beta yeah. games, but um, you know don't abandon them. That's kind of messed up. Well, yeah, and especially if you're spending like we spend money, yeah, yeah forty mm-hmm. or fifty bucks. I feel like that's a I do I see myself like I have a range of like what's okay, what's not okay. If I'm spending like forty or fifty bucks for you to get the game off the ground. Cool. I used to play this game called. Um, it's like Gunsmith or something, but it, it's still on my computer. They came out of, and this is to your effect, I was going to ask you this question. Are you okay with beta and the beta roadmap and then like hitting those cues and just playing the game and then as things come up, it's cool? Or would you rather the game come out of beta is my question and DLC packages? Um, I I would rather it come out of beta, beta because... So we've exp- I've experienced this a few times. I'm sure y'all have too. Uh, I want them to come out of beta. Trust me, I do. Mainly because you want a complete game. But I'm okay with it taking some time. Mm. I'm fine if you want to take some time. Now, if we're talking seven, eight, ten years, 
that might be a little long. You might be, you know, kind of taking advantage of that time of, like, getting more money any way you can. Okay, some developers don't do that, though. I will say it's not all of them. We're never really speaking about 100% of developers or 100% of, you know, whatever company. But I would like to see the games complete. That's just what it is. It makes me feel whole kind of about mm-hmm. whole kind of about what I purchased. Okay. You know, if I funded a game, like there are specific games that I have paid extra for almost as a donation. Sure, you get some in-game items, but it's uh it's I almost never worth it to pay that much more, you know. But I I enjoy that game so much that I want to help out and I want to see it through, mm-hmm. you know. I feel like when people make those big payments, that's what they're paying for, is seeing the game through. They want to see, oh, I don't want this to just die out because I enjoy it so much, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm cool with betas. I'm cool with alphas. I wish they would take a little bit less time Mm -hmm. to get to that. And I don't want to say end point because I want it to be an ongoing thing even after they release the game, but... Just more let's polished. not do yeah. Let's not do eight ten years of beta <laughs> testing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, and that's the game which we'll put here. But the game I was talking about, the space one, they used so their their in game like planet side shooting is planet side. They're the maker of planet side yeah. too, and they use the space game of like space flight to test stuff for planet side two. And planet side two is is a full functioning game with DLC cosmetics, all of that. But yet they have this other thing that's been stuck in alpha for years and they're just cranking money out of it. Like, and they'll come up with new ships and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah I enjoy that. I do enjoy that. They're crossing like the $800 million mark. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. you're talking almost a billion dollars yeah. for this game. It's yes. insane. But Fortnite that's, laughs at $800 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's one of the main reasons I want you to come on in our podcast is because you've been playing Escape from Tarkov. Since Alpha, I want to say you've been playing it since it was available to the public. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there there was a couple, like, I think the Alphas, I I think the either the last round of Alpha or the first beta, whatever testing that they did, I that's what got me. Um, there was a few or a couple of rounds before that that I didn't have a part of, but that's just because I didn't know about. I had no idea it existed until one of our mutual friends was like, look at this game. Yeah. Hey, like, there's no other game like this. There's no other game like this. You should check this out. I know you like, you know, first-person shooters. You should check this out. So I went and watched videos, and they had actually made uh, how that whole developing company started. It was they made, I think they're like Ukrainian, Russian. I, I don't really remember. They are. Um. I, I want to say they kind of took the... I don't know if you guys know Stalker. Mm-hmm. You guys ever heard of Stalker, the video game? No. It's a pretty old video game. It seems like they saw that, but didn't want... There's like a weird uh, uh, supernatural aspect to Stalker. I think they wanted that out of the game. So that's what their image was. I think. I don't really know. But it, someone had to have played Stalker and been like, we want this, but without the supernatural stuff. And then they made like a web browser game. And it was just, I think it was called Contractors Wars or something like that. And uh, uh, may have been popular, but to a small crowd because not a lot of people knew about it. And then they developed Escape from Tarkov off of that. Wrote a whole story, books. I mean, I think the first thing they did was write books. Yeah. They made music. They, it's their own music in the game. Uh, if I remember their, you know, band name or whatever, I I don't remember it. I uh, something. I, you it's know. been like ten years. It's hard to remember. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I also, uh, I haven't been playing it. To be completely honest, I've not really been playing it. I've, I will say, I've kind of calmed down on video games a lot. I've been watching a, a lot of TV for some reason, yeah. but I did play for. I would say eight years now, and I've tried to keep up with everything. Um, 
it's been kind of a storm recently, so I'm just I backed away from it a little bit, and I just that's what I'm interested allocating in. my time somewhere else. Gotcha. Yeah, because that that's basically how I heard about Escape from Tarkov was just watching you play it when yeah. we were roommates. Yeah, and then didn't hear anything about it, <laughs> and then just randomly within the past I don't know three or so years, I see it on Twitter, Reddit, yeah. YouTube, everywhere. And huge it's drama. Huge. Yeah. yeah. And it just blew up. So I know you've been in it. Is it, is it, is it different from the original, how you played it in beta versus whatever version they're on now? Is it like completely changed in the game? Do you not like it or? No, no, no. Just, you're kind of over. It hasn't changed the game. If anything, they've made the game better in, in so many, in more ways than they have. They've definitely taken more steps forward than backwards. Like, recently, they've added vaulting. They've gone through two graphics engines. So that's just getting better. Better mechanics, better weapons, better armor. Uh, they do... They implemented a legitimate armor system. I mean, it has gotten pretty crazy on how they want realism to be shown in that game. You're putting armor... Uh, like steel plate armors inside of carriers and it's only covering where the steel plates and they have different shapes and sizes for steel plates yeah. and those steel plates will only cover what is shown graphically. So there's no confusion, you know, like if you get shot in the armpit, you're getting shot in the armpit. Yeah. You're not, it's not so uh, your arm shoulder armpit is not soaking up that chest. armor. So they have very intricate hit boxes, oh right? My God. Oh yeah. Crazy. So intricate. Um, and more games are starting to pick up on that. And there's been a few games that have been... One is in beta right now. Uh, Gray Zone War. They did a little bit crazier. They even went a step above. And instead of doing your normal damage versus, you know, what to heal and whatnot, the way they did damage was um, legitimate spread pattern of, like, the certain type of ammo that you use. Oh, wow. So, and even if it goes through, like, wood or steel, if it is able to go through a steel plate or whatever it is that's in front of you, it changes the pattern of the, of, I, I'm... Like the trajectory the of the bullet? Th- that, but it also changes how... Uh, so, I wish I could show you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. visually, because it almost shows the bullet going, and whenever it hits, it expands. Like the, the damage the shrapnel, area. Oh, oh the it's like a, going everywhere. It's like a damage yeah. area visually in the game, but really what they're trying to uh, show is that's the shrapnel, you know, kind of it's going like outwards. The bullet fragments, like legitimately, like bending how it would, and like it was really being shot. Right, right. So, have y'all ever seen like those ballistic, uh, like ammo going being shot through those ballistic gels? Oh yeah, like it's oh yeah, baby, MythBusters. MythBusters. Yeah, that's how yeah. they do. That's how they do their damage. Like, oh, uh, that's cool. You know, if you get hit with that, say it hits you in the hand or the arm. Sorry, it's gonna hit like a bigger circle of the center point of where that bullet is, it's going to have a bigger diameter around it of where it hits your like vital organs or bones. You know what I mean? Whatever that is. Uh, So they're getting pretty crazy with realism and first and shooters, regardless of first person or third person. But um, yeah, going back to escape from Tarkov, they have definitely taken, you know, Steps forward, steps back for sure, and I think the community kind of, like, gets butt hurt knowing that they are taking steps back. Yeah. Um, then they take some pretty big steps back in kind of, like, the marketing. That's, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, before we go into that, Star Citizen name of the star f- citizen is oh, the game nice. Nice. yes yeah, it yeah. finally hit him i've only heard of stars i've never played i oh, usually oh yeah i'm not too into space stuff yeah that's why i never even picked up uh uh what is starfield starfield, starfield. Yeah. yeah i mean space is space games are pretty cool but 
I don't think anything's gonna top Mass Effect. Mass Effect was peak <laughs> space video yeah, gaming. So good. That's that's I'll put that Shepherd? out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yep. my god. Yeah, I'll put that out there. When they got rid of Shepard, I got rid of Mass Effect. Dream Sickle. Was that in the second one? Was he in the second one or was it the third one? I think the third one. Yeah. Yeah. Where you get to like create your own character. Yeah. 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 Whack. Uh, yeah. Bring that <laughs> Whack. dream sickle back here. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about nobody else. Um, but, so, but yeah. yeah. So what, are, what is Tarkov's deal with? Yeah. This whole drama. I mean, okay. I think it's calmed down at this point. A lot of it has calmed down. Uh, it, it, you go back to like, okay, we don't care. We just want to play the game. You right. know, the people who want to play the game and who really enjoy the game are going to play it. Right. Regardless of what they do. They will pay that extra 100 bucks, 150 whatever. When I first got the game, I bought it for two other people. And one of them, I bought the, the Founders Edition for, uh, I think, Edge of Darkness is what they called it back in the day. Just to support the game even further. Yeah. That's it. I That's all I wanted to do was pay even more to support the game even further because i know for a fact that they did not have like an ongoing cash flow there was no ongoing cash flow for that game there's no uh live service there's no there's nothing you could buy from them you know what i mean there's no uh no online shop no no online shop no skins nothing so and you know how the 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 I, I don't want to call them like the purists or elitist gamers where it's like no pay to pay to win, pay to win which yeah. I mean, if you're buying skins, it's not pay to win, but it's like, yeah. we don't want to pay for anything. Yeah. We want to buy the game and have everything. Yeah. Well, how do you think these develop or developers are going to survive? Yeah. Uh, especially small time developers like that. Yeah. Man. Small studios where they don't have, you know, a major like Activision backing their entire right. project. So I understand them wanting to sell some skins. I get that. But they did mess up in taking back things. This You should never do this. Any game developers listening right now, never go back on your word. In fact, any person. <laughs> yeah. Just don't go back on your word. Yeah. yeah. Don't intentionally delete words that you know... These gamers are not going to go read it and be like, oh, is that what I said back in the day? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what they... No, nah, these people got screenshots every month of what it says on the website. I don't even know how they found this out. I would have never found this out if somebody didn't post about it on Twitter. They posted a new screenshot of the verbiage on their website and an old one. And I'm like, why would anybody even screenshot the, oh bro the there's, there's so many people yeah, out there but yeah, yeah i'm yeah. with you you, know you go I mean? straight like, creature mode and <laughs> they just it happened know. so fast yeah. they did it so quickly after they took the words uh out of it's just a few certain words that were uh you get yada 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 i don't remember the exact words um but it was pretty much saying that you got certain things. Like, if you bought this package or whatever, in the future, you, got this. you would get yeah. so and so and so, right? And then, so on their newer post, it they was just three words. They just went, boop, deleted, deleted them. Yeah. And <laughs> the people were like, like that. Yeah. Immediately caught them red handed. Uh, and, and I get why they wanted more money, understandable, but you did it in a weird way. You shouldn't have done that. That's just. No, Dude, what was the value? What was the value of those three words? Uh, like the total, like the original package you bought. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to. Uh, I think or it was, was it like was it just a piece? What was it a piece of it, or was that thing that they took out? What did so they what take it out? Was, right, what it was. Um, there's three different packages you could buy. The initial, you know, you get the video game. Um, there's a second package, which is. For people who wanted a little bit more video game, but didn't want to pay the 150 or whatever it was. Then the third one is you want to, you love this game. You want, I just bought the, this is usually what I do. I almost never go for, immediately go for the biggest packages. Like the collector. Yeah, one, the okay. collector. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a tier one Andy. For sure. <laughs> yeah. If it's like yeah. barely $60, I'm like, ooh, I'm sweating. <laughs> oh, even if it's 30 bucks, because I think yeah. at the time it was like 35 or $40. I still didn't want to pay that. And, right. Yeah. But I did anyways, just to try it out. Within days, I bought the, the top package because I fell in love with the game so quickly, so quickly. Um, especially at the time, there was no meta. There was no 
no cheating, man. The cheating, uh, we're not, I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> the, there's no cheating. It was peaceful. Well, I would I say peaceful. I'm you know shooting people. It yeah. wasn't that peaceful. But it just made me feel good. Peaceful as in it was simple. You log on, you play the game, and then the experience that the satisfied. game gave you was the peaceful lovely. part. Yeah, lovely. Like not this. It's not hop on. Like okay, everyone in this lobby is aimbotting. <laughs> like they can yeah. see me through the wall. Like I'm out. Yeah. That adds so much more stress to video <laughs> games. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It adds so much more stress to video games because you get stressed out, especially in a game like it's hardcore. So you die, you lose your stuff. The stuff you paid for. All the, your gear you put together, the gun, armor, you lose it all. The next guy takes it. You know what I mean? So it kind of sucks when you (laughs) turn a corner and you just drop dead. Immediately. Because someone's, you know. And I get sometimes that happens. Yeah. That's cool. But when it happens 90% of the day that you're playing the game, then it becomes a problem. And I know in a game like that, it's hard to tell. There's no, like, uh, what, what is Anti-cheat or anything? No, no, no. There's an anti-cheat, but there's no kill cam. Oh, Sorry. yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no kill cam, so you're not really seeing what's going on, but we, like, everyone knows that the cheaters are there. Yeah. And they're rampant, yeah. running around everywhere. There's cheaters in all games at this point, yeah. and it's just hard to get rid of. Who has the crazy anti-cheat software, though? Is it Valorant? They have, like, a super, like, they almost not catch you instantly, but if there's a it's a, it, I like think a it's kernel either, level? It, it's Valorant has, like, a kernel level, yeah. or or it's Riot's new thing. And um, CS doesn't. Face It is. Face It's pretty hardcore, um, which is a new, it's a CS. Basically, it's a platform that you play, so you launch the game, and then you have Face It Up. Face It is, which I got from when we went to DreamHack, um, it's an interface of, like, all the players that play the game. But it ha- it's an anti-cheat, but it's also, like, a launcher. So you click, like, I want to play a game. So I have CS Up, or Counter-Strike for the ones that don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So I have CS Up, and then I have Face It Up. I click on Face It Play. Only players in Face It will, will learn and or load into a Face It server, which they have already like they constantly sweep their server for cheats, and then you can play the game in there. And then when the game is over, it kicks you out back to Face It. That is like the best experience that I've had because CS mm-hmm. has it rampant too. Yeah, but um, I think it's the kernel level. Any of the kernel level ones that basically are like embedded in your computer. Yeah, yeah they and people don't hardware. like them. No, 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 no. I've come to realize that. I don't know much about anti cheat, but I, I do. You know, on Reddit, uh, people are so against it. The only problem is, is that's one of the anti cheats that's actually working. It's just, uh, I guess, uh, an invasion of privacy, which yeah. I didn't, I didn't know. You, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like right. you can't say like right. I want this, but I don't want that. Yeah. Here's the easy medium: make the I don't want that. <laughs> like make make the anti cheat because what happens is like kernel level. Is like your passwords are on that level, your um, locked like pictures are on that level. Really, yeah. Stuff okay. like that. So that's why it's pretty much everything you don't want the world to see. You yeah, kind of get access. To. And so, and that's why a lot of people have issues with kernel level any cheat is yeah. because you have access. What's it stopping you from going any further? Now, do I think the developers are doing that? No. But what I do think is that it could give somebody a doorway, and I think that's what bothers. It could them. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I could be wrong about this because I, I don't know shit about, like, <laughs> cybersecurity, right? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that the anti-cheat being on a kernel level is slightly more hardware intensive as well on your yeah. system. I don't know. I think I've read that somewhere. I could be making that up. So, if you know, if you're, if you're already playing on a lunchbox and you're, like, trying to go play <laughs> Valorant and you're like, oh, God, like, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah. But I'm going to kind of bring it back around to the original question that you – yeah, the original question you brought up was with games taken out, like coming out so long in development to where it's like years, like 10 years, yeah. eight years. For a game, just say like Rockstar, when they put out like GTA 6 or whatever. Mm-hmm. When a Rockstar puts out a game, you know it's going to be good. It, it's, it's hard for them to miss, right? Yeah. 
but it takes eight years to develop. And just say for something like the new Call of Duty or whatever, like Tarkov comes out in the future, it takes them longer to develop because they're developing like a better and better anti-cheat software, but it takes longer for them to put out this game. Does that bother you as much? If it's still taking long, but you know the game's going to be good and you know when you hop on? If I know I'm going to hop on and this is going to be a game I'm going to play for the next say it takes him five years to make the game. If I'm going to play it for 10. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, the, the, what is it? The reward outweighs any of the negatives that you got to go through yeah. to get to that reward. You know, it, I, I'm cool. I'm cool with it really either way. As long as you give me a good game. Yeah. And that's what I was kind of saying is it's okay for it to take time. That's fine. And I know I said, you know, not eight to ten years, but if it really needs to and it's going to be a big hitter, why not? Yeah. Why not? And if we can play it while they're doing that, like if it is in beta and we can play it while they're adding stuff to it, just like Tarkov, you know, and a bunch of other games that are doing it right now, I'm totally cool with that. I'm 100% cool with I that. I wish the big AAA studios would do that with their games, like GTA 6 or Elder Scrolls. Six. Well, their the whole game. thing is is um, live services, man. That's like yeah. that's just what they want to go for now. It's such a money maker. Battle Pass City. They don't because they have that extra. They're not just a developer, and you know a few other companies tied to it that really love making video games. When you're talking about like EA, all the Ubisoft, all these big boys, yeah. They've got people above them, I'm sure. Oh, I don't yeah. really know how things work, but they've got people above them, I'm sure, just poking at the at the back of their heads. Where's our money? Yeah, where's where it's going to make the most money. Yes. That's yeah. what you need to be focused on. Live not. services. Yeah. Live services. Go on. Well, and Go I, on. And I honestly think that's what happened to Fortnite. Like, you know, it's it's like a 100%. running joke now, but yeah. it's... Um, but they did it right. So I was, I was in on Fortnite's alpha. So what Fortnite was supposed to be was a basically you go out you collect supplies and you build your fort to withstand zombie waves one of the tests and we've talked about it before one of the tests they wanted to it was a stress test for the server is they literally dropped in the max amount of players you could have in one game and they dropped in all the weapons and they said go and it was literally it was almost like og minecraft like flat world and you were just fighting. So did Fortnite come up with that idea of, of like a battle royale? Not really I'm, a battle royale? I'm not 100% sure yeah. because what I think happened is the community, like I know we, I know through Fortnite we played for like two weeks like that because mm-hmm. they were just stress testing the server before the game came out. And then somebody like split and started doing their own server, started adding pieces in like, hey, there's a strategy. Um if you break stuff, you're going to, and I, what I think Fortnite went with it was we had this element of a, of a fort builder, right? And people are loving the shooting aspect. How do we figure that out? Mm -hmm. And I think it just developed from there. But to, to the point of it is that they were like, what can we, what's going to make people want to do this? Oh, well we have these base characters, but you have to drop in with a glider. How many gliders can we give them? And then it just spawns this because truthfully, I mean, we have to give it to Fortnite. A, it's a, it's a, a business move, but battle passes didn't pop up until Fortnite. Like, yeah. Hey, there was a level progression. And as you leveled up and played the game and uh, you know, not that I'm like, I'm, I'm going back on my word, but what I, th- I think the initial idea was is to pay us for our, like you pay for it and you're rewarded for your play time. Does that make sense? Like I play, and I get these things, what it has become is there's three or four things that are cool that you're like, man, I really want that. But now it's tied behind a $20 every month or every, th- what's every three months now? It's, yeah. you know. Mythic skin. <laughs> there yeah. you go, right? And you're like, <laughs> oh, I can be Goku now. Okay, here's <laughs> yeah. all of my money. Here's yes. just take my credit card number. I right. don't care. No, but uh, I get what you're saying. and I But I wish, like, they would kind of, at least Bethesda would come into the more modern age of how they're doing yeah. like beta games and like release just like a town in like the new Elder Scrolls, whatever, wherever they're going, you know, not in Tamriel or Cyrodiil, whatever it's called. They release one little zone 
yeah. that you could just play test over the past, you know, six years, that would feed enough of the rampaging fan base they have to keep them satisfied until the game comes out and you'd squeeze more money out of them. Have you have you seen Once Human? Or did you ever have you played it? Nope. So it's this it comes out in a week, but it's a it's a shooter MMO base building. Yes. It has all the things. Um, buzzwords cla- it, like it literally I can't remember it was like a laundry list but I played it but Steam had this it was the summer of play or the summer of new it's something like that whatever catch word they had all these games that are coming out this summer and the games released like demos but they're not like the demos we played they were live servers and you could play up to a point and then they would cap you and once human did that and I was because I was on it's a free game, but I was like on the fence of like, do I wanna allocate that space? I probably have played once human for like seven and a half hours. The demo. And like just in it like there's not even everything in the game. Yeah. It's just there's the pieces, there's the basic base building that I can get. To your point, Tyler, if games would do that, then it kind of scratches the itch and then you're you're going. Yeah, it's it just goes back to the old adage is just, you know, throw us some scraps. We're not yeah. asking for the whole bone. We just want a little <laughs> something to nibble on until you're done with the damn thing. I want a yeah. juicy steak. Yeah, I know. I know. But <laughs> like I'll take I'll take something. Yeah. You know, right? Give me the just a little ribeye. The I'll be yeah, fine. Give me the runoff from the roof. Something <laughs> to just sustain myself yeah. over these next years. And then I base I just want to end it on just one little rant. And that's with the release of Modern Horizons 3 coming out. (laughs) And I was holding this until it actually became available at like Target and Walmart and stuff. Because I wanted to see the actual base price of these packs, these booster packs. Which in the past were $5.96. It's $5.99. You're right. Now, I don't know what the hell happened. They're $10.50. Yep. They doubled from Junction to Modern Horizons. I know they put out some heat in these packs. But that's bullshit, Wizards. And I, I, it's making it harder and harder for me to want to either, like, well, not play Magic, but buy any yeah. new Magic cards. Just because, like, the price, the, the market for Magic cards is so, it doesn't make any damn sense. And we've talked about it before, but they're reprinting cards and they're getting more expensive. Yeah. The, the reprint, are you talking about, like, a reprint of, that's right, I know what you're saying. It's the reprint of an old card. Yeah. Uh, and, and just just every the base of everything in 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 magic is getting expensive the commander the when you went to go buy the pre-made commander boxes which i have one in here like yeah. an older set yeah the cat deck it was 49.99 if you bought it at target the eldrazi commander decks right now at target for modern horizons 3 are like 79.98 yes. yeah, that's because those are selling for like 100 and Twenty dollars right now. Yeah, you know what uh, I mean on the resale market. It yeah. Really, yeah. it's it's the community is creating yeah. that market. Well, we create our own worst, we create our own worst problem. Seriously, yeah. I'm yeah. I seriously. hate this community. Y'all, <laughs> all of y'all suck. I hate you. Like you're making me in, I, in yeah. It's not inflation. It's us, and we we're terrible. Wh- whoever's out here. I mean, it's a little bit of both. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. a little bit of both. But the, I mean, when you got people. Like our mutual friend, who are buying these? Oh yeah, will hoarding them? Yeah, for a year and then realizing, oh, this a commander deck sells for two hundred and fifty dollars now. Does he turn around and sell it? He has. Okay, he has. Oh no, he he straight up and just told me he's like, I'm gonna resell some of this. Like there you go. Later. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if he that's words straight from his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> So that that's all I wanted to end on is your our magic community is terrible, <laughs> not the not the players per se, but the resellers, and then wizards like you can go, you know, yeah, you go to hell. <laughs> 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 well, like always, guys, uh, get some friends, get your family. This has been a great episode, Moody. Um, just kind of on. hearing awesome, everything. Um, play games. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Peace. Peace out.